look at an R290 compressor replacement. As we get ready to look at a compressor replacement, keep in mind a few of the following points and pieces of equipment. The hydrocarbon gas detector is probably the most important piece of equipment on the job site. The hydrocarbon gas detector we want to use is the very first thing when we get there, and we want to use it to sweep the outside of the cabinet and the inside of the cabinet, looking for any potential R290 that's leaked out of that system. Also then leave it running on the ground in front of the cabinet for the entire performance of the maintenance. We also want to use a safety placard. Since we have flammable refrigerants in these systems, you want everyone else around your job site to know that you're working on a flammable refrigerant. Also, finally, make sure that you have ventilation to your job site. You want to have that fan, preferably an R290 proof fan right there on your job site. In case you do have a leak, it can blow that R290 away. If it's not an R290 proof fan, just make sure to have it a good distance away and keep it outside of that 10 foot radius where we don't want to have anything potentially spark producing. For the actual compressor replacement, we recommend some certain tools that's going to make the job easier. For the failure diagnosis, a screwdriver and a multimeter. And then for the actual replacement itself, an R290 approved recovery machine, R290 approved recovery cylinder, a digital scale, R290 manifold set, preferably with 12 to 18 inch length hoses, 2 millimeter ID if you can get it. We'll need to be able to do soap bubbles, R290 approved fan, and have an R290 approved vacuum pump. Uh, most of these tools are not actually required to do the job, but definitely recommended to make the work easier on you. If you must recover the R290 out of the equipment, make sure that you use an R290 approved recovery machine and also an R290 approved recovery cylinder. Warnings when working on an R290 system. Make sure the cabinet was designed for R290 use. R290 cannot be retrofitted in a system not designed for flammable refrigerants. It's actually illegal to do so, at least in the United States. Always use the refrigerant that is labeled R290 and not propane. R290 has to be refrigerant grade propane and can't just be regular propane like you might use in a grill. Use the proper R290 cylinder. In the USA, it'll be a 14 ounce cylinder. And then use a precision scale to make sure that you get the correct charge. R290 needs to be a refrigerant grade propane. It can't just be regular propane. So it's gonna be 99.5% pure propane. Even that 0.5% left over, there are guidelines to specify what can be in that 0.5%. So it's very specific for this kind of equipment. If you take that 99.5% purity and even lowered it 1% down to 98.5%, you would see a three to 6% reduction in the performance of your equipment. So you need to verify that you have R290 and not just any other grade of propane. First step will be to review your work procedure. We want to have a standardized work procedure that we use on every single job site, treating every job site like it has a flammable refrigerant in that cabinet. This will include a visual site inspection, donning your PPE like glasses and gloves, looking for potential sparking components like pilot lights, switches, etc. Sweep the site with your hydrocarbon gas detector, sweep inside and outside of the cabinet, and leave the detector running in the lowest area of the site as R290 is heavier than air. Next, you'll unplug the unit Place the safety placard up so that everyone else in your job site knows that you're working on a flammable refrigerant. Also, make sure you have a fire extinguisher on the job site. Finally, start some ventilation with an R290 approved fan. You wanna keep that ventilation running the entire time so that if there is a leak and that R290 gets out, it'll just blow it away. To diagnose a failed compressor. First thing we want you to do is to just review the technical data in the manufacturer's spec sheet. Then to remove the compressor from the refrigeration system, Start by disconnecting the power cable. Remove the cover of the electrical components. It's also necessary to remove the start capacitor and the overload protector. Then we need to check for electrical continuity in the power cable.
Test the electrical continuity in the overload protector. Test the capacitance. It's necessary to check the compressor windings through the three terminal contacts, testing two at a time. If it shows that one of them is open, it's because of a compressor burnout. You must use the appropriate manifold for each type of refrigerant to avoid any contamination by different types of oil, and we also need to be careful with the different pressures. Compressor replacement. To release the refrigerant properly, you just have to install the piercing valve on the process tube and open the valve to release the gas. Remember, R290 or propane is a flammable gas and we need to be sure it's not allowed to accumulate too much in one space, so be sure to have adequate ventilation. It may also be necessary to route the refrigerant away from the work site using a tube or to recover the refrigerant. R290 can be vented to the atmosphere, unlike a traditional refrigerant, which must be recovered. Any other type of refrigerant, it's mandatory to use a recovery machine to collect the refrigerant, since most of the gases cause damage to the environment. This is where R290 is different from the gases that you're used to using. If you must recover the R290 out of the equipment, make sure that you use an R290 approved recovery machine and also an R290 approved recovery cylinder. After releasing the refrigerant, we connect the nitrogen cylinder to the manifold and inject the gas at a pressure of 50 pounds because it's necessary in a compressor with flammable refrigerants like R600A or R290 to avoid buildup in the condenser and the evaporator. Now that nitrogen is released, just remove the valve. Then sand the original tubes of the compressor to facilitate brazing. They should be sanded where they're soldered in the areas close to the compressor. After sanding, cut the discharge and the suction tubes, leaving about one inch or 20 to 30 millimeters from the end of the process tube. It's necessary to be very careful and it isn't recommended to unsolder the tubes since there could be a clog in the cap tube or the filter dryer. With R290, it's definitely preferred to cut the tubes. Now that we cut the tubes and the compressor can be removed. We can't use the same filter because the desiccant material can absorb moisture only once. Now we can install the new filter. It's necessary to use the correct type of filter for each type of refrigerant. For R290, make sure that that filter is certified for R290 use. In the extra connection, we'll install the Schrader valve. Then we connect the filter to the condenser outlets. Now we can bend the capillary tube and braze it into the other end of the filter. Remember to compare the label in the old compressor against the new compressor to check the gas type and make sure we have the correct replacement compressor. We also have to check the equivalent capacity and the connection compatibility. It's important to remember that the new compressors have new electricals as well. Now you have to check the tube diameters and position of the tubes. Connect the discharge and suction tube and install the Schrader valve in the process tube, removing the cap and valve before brazing. After doing the welding, you can install the Schrader valve cap and the manifold to the process tube and on the filter's third connection. Now we'll inject a nitrogen charge of 75 pounds to check if there are any leaks in the welds by doing a soap bubble test. After that, you can release the nitrogen. Now you should do the vacuum process using a vacuum pump that reaches 500 microns. The best way is to carry on the vacuum process through both the low pressure side of the system connected to the process tube, 
as well as the high pressure side of the system connected to the service valve of the filter dryer. When the vacuum process reaches 500 microns, hold it for 20 minutes. Installation of the electrical components. The appropriate sequence to install the electrical components. First, you have to install the capacitor, then the overload protector and the relay onto the compressor's terminal. Connect the electrical wiring of the cooling system and the overload protector terminals. Put the cover of the electrical components back on. Charging the system. Charge the gas by weight, according to the product label, using a precision scale accurate to one gram. Inject the required amount of refrigerant through the manifold. Turn on the compressor again to complete the charge, but only after equalizing. Do not forget to close the high pressure valve. Verify the weight of the cylinder to make sure the required refrigerant charge has been added to the system. Finish the installation, we remove the manifold and install the service valve caps. When sealing up the system, there are a couple different recommendations out there. What we used to recommend was to use a crimping tool to crimp off the process tube and then to braze the system shut. The new recommendation is to use a system like the Vulcan lock ring system so that you no longer have to braze on the process tube. When using the Vulcan lock ring system, it's a brazeless process and you can seal up the system by just using a cap. It's important to remember, when using a system like the Vulcan lock ring system, if it requires a compound or a glue or anything that could enter the system, make sure to follow the manufacturer's directions very precisely so that that compound doesn't end up in the system and then inside the compressor where it can cause problems. Now that the refrigerant is charged, give the system a final inspection. When you finish, turn on the product for one to two hours to verify its performance. Just seal the tubes with the old compressor and the service is complete. In conclusion, the most important thing to remember when working on a system with a flammable refrigerant is that the safety requirements are very different. If you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to contact Embraco Technical Support. If you're interested in learning more about Embraco R290 or R600A compressors, you can find more information on our website, www.embraco.com, or at the Embraco Refrigeration Club.